Hello and welcome to Applying Java. This is SciGuy1121. Applying Java is a series of tutorials in which I will teach basic Java users or Java beginners how to take their knowledge and apply it to real um, programs. Now, this is part one of a series of tutorials in which we are going to be creating a basic calculator. This set of tutorials um, will teach you, it will go from using the Eclipse console and any command line tool you might use um, to take basic input from the user. Um, it will teach you how to parse that string input, uh, get numbers out of strings, and other such string functions. And then in the end, it will teach you how to use um, a basic GUI system with buttons and text fields. Um, and I will go in depth on those topics. Now, this series is going to assume that you have at least a basic Nova, uh, basic Nova, no, basic knowledge of Java. And with that, I'm going to assume that you have a basic knowledge of either the Eclipse SDK or whatever, or Eclipse IDE or whatever IDE you're using, be that NetBeans um, or something else. So let's jump right in. I'm going to create a new project. And since I'm really bad at naming things, I'm just going to name it calculator. Now the way our calculator is going to work is a little bit unorthodox. What we're going to do is we're going to pass the program um, an actual string as the input rather than passing it several numbers. The program will parse this string, take out bits and pieces from it, and then it will output the answer. <coughs> so we need to create um, a package. So I'm going to say com dot scigui one two one two one dot source. Yeah, dot source. And we're going to create a new class, and this will be main. Now main is not going to extend anything, it's just going to be our main class to get the program running. Now if you only know Java based on, say, Minecraft modding tutorials, because I bet most of the people watching this video at least are on my channel because of those, you might not necessarily know some basic Java conventions. Now one of these is that when you're creating a program, you have to have a main method. And when you create this main method, it has to be public, static, void, main, and the parameters are string, args, with brackets. <coughs> now what Java is doing here is it is going to search all of your classes for this main file, and then go to the main method and just run all of the commands in it. If the commands don't go anywhere else, it will then terminate the program. So if we said system dot out dot dot print ln, and we said hello world, and we were to run the program, then you'll see it simply says hello world, and then it terminates itself. <coughs> now system dot out dot print ln, uh, what that does is it basically outputs text to the terminal. Um, in this case, it is the Eclipse console. However, if you were to run this main program outside of Eclipse, it would um, output that data into either the terminal console if you're running on Mac, or command prompt console if you're running on Windows. So what we're going to want to do for our program is start off so that we can get the basic logic of it in um, with using completely the text-based in text interface. So we're going to say system dot out dot print ln and we'll say input operation. Now um, we're going to want to take the user's input for whatever operation they want to perform. So um, what we're going to want to do is utilize something called the scanner. Now the scanner takes data from the computer. Um, and we can set it up so that it takes data from the console. So we're going to create a new variable right here. So that'll be scanner input equals new scanner. 
And then as a parameter for the constructor, we're going to say system dot it, meaning it's going to take input. <coughs> now we want to create a new string, so string in equals input dot next. What this does is it simply takes the next line of code after the user hits enter, and then it will store that in our string in. Now if we wanted to just um, print out this, we would say system.out.println uh, and in. And we would run the program, input operation 5, and it will print 5 for us. This simply tells us that our program is working. Now we don't want to actually do that. We want to have our program take whatever string is entered and perform mathematical operations on it. So we're going to create a new class and I will name this calculator. This class is going to do most of the heavy lifting for us. Now I'm going to create a new uh, method inside calculator and it will be public void parse string with the input string input. <coughs> Excuse me. So now inside of our main.java I'm going to create a new calculator object so calculator calc equals new calculator and then we'll just say calc dot is it oh yes we have to say um, this is going to be private static calculator and then we can say calc dot parse string and we'll input in. So now we can actually set up um, the method here to parse our string input and actually get useful data with which it can calculate. So now I don't really like the name parse string. I think it sounds a little bit confusing if we were to share our code with anyone and they had to edit it. So I want to rename it. Now, if we were to have a super, super complicated program, then renaming a method can cause a lot of problems and it can take a long, long time to rename it every single time it's used. So we can do something called refactoring. What we do is we just right click on the method name and we can go to ref refactor in the Eclipse interface. I'm assuming you're using Eclipse. Um, it's free. You can download it from eclipse.org. I highly recommend it. You can go to refactor, rename, and then we can rename our method. So I'm going to call this calculate. Now what refactoring does is it actually changes it every single time it's used. So you'll see now we have calc.calculate. So that's actually going to be it for this tutorial. We have a basic system set up for getting ready to parse our string. In the next tutorial, I will begin and perhaps finish um, setting up all of the um, methods we need to perform the mathematical operations. And from there, we will set up the GUI and get that hooked up to our logic code. So. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you next time. Bye.